It's budget day in Barbados and all eyes are on Prime Minister Mia Motley, who was set to deliver the financial package, the first in two years, at 3 p.m. Economists will be keeping a close eye on government's proposed financial and social policies. At a pre-budget panel discussion hosted by the Democratic Labour Party last evening, Professor Justin Robinson, the Pro Vice Chancellor for the UE Board for Undergraduate Studies, says he was anxious to hear government's plan to make up an $800 million deficit. When we look at the current estimates for 2022-23, it is probably not surprising that we have a budget because the the deficit projected in these estimates is larger than what many would think would be consistent with the targets of the IMF program and some of the funding to make up that deficit is not identified in these estimates. So I certainly was looking out to see if there were any additional measures, which is what would come in a budget to attempt to really give a smaller deficit. Economist Carlos Fort is also looking forward to government's plan to grow the economy post-COVID. Fort is especially keen on government's next move for the Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Program, which is expected to end in June. Given the, the obligations or the commitments under the existing BERT program, which is scheduled to um, expire later this year, um, as a result of the pandemic, some of those, those targets were, were eased or relaxed. And the implication of that, the IMF has already spoken to it, is that in the years to come, government would have to make up for some of the lost opportunity, um, some of the fiscal consolidation gains that were lost over the course of the last um, two years. And it's against that context that a plan uh, uh, estimates which contemplates a planned deficit of 3.3% uh, of GDP is somewhat surprising for um, economists and, and some of the other financial observers um, looking on. Um, so th that perhaps is one of the first surprises of the estimate. The implications of that planned 3.3% uh, fiscal deficit is a revenue gap of just above 8, um, sorry, uh, a, a, a deficit or a funding gap of just above $800 million um, in the next uh, fiscal year beginning um, next month. After a two-year break due to environmental issues, the budget speech will be presented from the Lower Chamber of Parliament buildings in Bridgetown. Word of this from Senior Minister in the Prime Minister's Office with Responsibility for Infrastructural Projects and Town Planning, Dr. William Duguid, who over the weekend was overseeing the final touches to the building. It was a tremendously long and difficult time. As you would recall, we had significant environmental problems here at the Parliament. We had mold in certain sections, we had fiberglass in the roof, and we had a myriad of other areas that had wood ants and, and all sorts of deterioration. And what we endeavored to do over the period of time was to get as many of the environmental things fixed as we could because we had members and staff that were suffering significantly from the mold and from the fiberglass and obviously the structure would have suffered from the wood ants. So it has been a tremendous effort on behalf of everybody, be it the Ministry of Housing, be it the staff here at Parliament and all the cleaners, all of the associated people, all the contractors that were involved. And I'm pleased to say that come Monday, we will be ready to have budget back in Parliament in Bridgetown. Sugar harvesting gets underway today. At the weekend, Minister of Agriculture and Food Security in Darweer toured Portville Sugar Factory to get a first-hand look at the final preparations for this year's crop. Weir says he was satisfied with the readiness of the factory and workers are ready for this year's harvest. That being the case, the supply chain interruptions impacted on us getting the parts here. So then we looked at it again and we thought that we can come with a February start. But of course, a lot of the parts that we needed, especially for the boilers, the boiler tubes, uh, did not reach us until the end of December and therefore uh, those tubes had to be put in 
It was long, hard work. I wish to thank the team here at Portville for putting in the type of work that was required to get us to this point. And so therefore, um, those delays resulted in us coming here today to announce the start of the crop uh, for Monday, being um, Monday, March the, was, was Monday's the, the 14th. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Barbados Sugar Industries Limited, Mark Seeley, is happy to see the start of this year's sugar harvest, but he wants officials to work on starting the harvesting earlier on in the year when the sugar canes in the south of the island are prime and ready. It has been, as the Minister said, it's been a bit of a long road to get to the starter crop this year. Certainly, we're in very challenging times worldwide. Um, we had, of course, the minister mentioned last year, we had the pandemic, we had the ash, and we also actually had um, a hurricane as well. And uh, this year we have, um, you know, an invasion and a war which is um, um, playing out in Europe. So there are some significant challenges, um, certainly the supply chain, and I think most of the distribution sector in Barbados would know that there have been significant supply chain disruptions. Um, we possibly can expect um, some more of these, you know, prices are increasing, etc. So um, it is indeed challenging times. However, I have to say um, that um, it's very important that we start to prepare uh, for the crop virtually as soon as the crop starts for the for the crop in the next year in other news this monday the young leaders of the barbados hotel and tourism association are calling for barbadians to stop littering on the island's beaches chairman of the barbados hotel and tourism association's young leaders development committee jamal griffith who led a team of 12 to clean up pebbles beach at radisson aquatica early sunday morning says the eight bags of garbage collected included wine bottles pieces of material for makeshift shelters and all types of plastic we did a beach clean that basically organized from brown's beach um, all the way down to the hilton stretch of the beach there we just wanted to do something for the community because the beach is a very integral part of barbadian culture and what barbadians do and we wanted to give back um, from that place. And we also wanted to make sure that we spread the message of trying to keep our natural environment as clean as possible. Um, don't litter, try to recycle as much as possible. If you take something to the beach, take it back where you take it back home because there's nobody here at the beach actually cleaning. Somebody has to come and do it and somebody has to be paid to do it. Or mindful citizens like ourselves or other people will have to go and take their time to do it. And we don't mind putting the effort in but there should be no need in the first place to put the effort in if we all just take our garbage home and be mindful of the next person who's coming so they can enjoy the beach the same way how you did. The COVID-19 situation in Barbados continues to improve and as a result the Ministry of Health has relaxed more COVID protocols. Over the weekend, Health Minister Ian Gooden Agile announced the resumption of nightclubs and indoor and outdoor sporting activities. In light of the encouraging improvement in the national COVID situation, the final relaxation of COVID restrictions will come into effect on Monday 14th March in the new COVID directive. Nightclubs can restart. The requirements will be proof of vaccine certificate or a negative rapid antigen test for patrons within a day before entry. The COVID monitoring unit must be informed prior to the opening of the nightclubs. Karaoke will be allowed with three feet distancing and routine sanitization measures, singers must stay six feet away from the main group of patrons. Pleasure craft, party cruises and private boats will continue to operate at 100% capacity with proof of vaccine status or negative rapid antigen test result for patrons within a day before entry. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, 101 persons tested positive for the viral illness from the 713 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Saturday. Of those 101 persons, 43 were males and 58 were females. From the new test conducted, 20 individuals were under the age of 18 and 81 were 18 years and older. There were 45 persons in isolation facilities and 1,105 in home isolation. An unvaccinated Barbadian male, 
age 87, succumbed to the viral illness on Saturday, bringing the total number of COVID-19 deaths to 325. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. regional happenings, the Royal Grenada Police Force has its hands full as violence, especially among school-aged children, increases. Commissioner of Police Urban Martin is particularly concerned about the number of weapons being seized in schools. More this report from GBN News. Not so keen on addressing the issue of weapons among children publicly, as he deemed it a sensitive matter. Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin responded to questions of dangerous weapons in schools. Just before arriving to this press conference, I received pictures of the confiscation of a number of what I consider to be um, dangerous knives and daggers in a primary school, in a primary school, responded to a controversy in a secondary school over the steal and hide and re-steal and hide of a, a gun mirroring that of a real firearm, albeit the fact that it being an A gun in a school and the police had to intervene and recover that. On the international front, in the United States, President Joe Biden has countered a court challenge to his border policy. He maintains that unaccompanied migrant children will not be expelled from the U.S. We get more of this report from Reuters TV. The Biden administration said unaccompanied migrant children will continue to not be expelled from the United States in a bid to counter a court challenge to the current practice. The controversial Title 42 order was issued by the CDC in March 2020 when Donald Trump was president at the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic. It allowed U.S. authorities to quickly expel migrant families caught crossing the U.S. border without a chance to seek refuge in the U.S. Biden reversed some of Trump's hardline immigration policies after taking office in January 2021, but government data shows his administration has expelled migrants more than a million times under the Title 42 order. Early in his presidency, Biden exempted unaccompanied children from the expulsion policy. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.